Hello and welcome to episode eight of How's Your Week Been? Uh, I'm Lee Wilcox. I'm the CEO of On The Tools, a media marketing agency based in the Midlands. Um, and for the first time ever <laughs> on the podcast, reluctantly, I've got, <laughs> I've got the co-founder of On The Tools sitting beside me. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Adam Barry. I'm co-founder of On The Tools, <laughs> creative director, and uh, I'm glad I was what, seventh pick to fill in today? <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. No, right. um, just a little bit about me. Um, I, uh, I used to work in the trade. So I was a tradesman for 12 years prior to setting up on the tools. So that's my background. And now I uh, deal with the production, social, and the design aspects of on the tools. Nice. Uh, I'm glad to, glad to have you here, mate. I really am. Yeah. Special moment. Yeah. One and only. I don't know you're going to ditch me next time, aren't you? But, <laughs> yeah. um, so this is the podcast where we get. Super interesting guests from the business world. We talk about some Wib coin. You can win some of that or you can lose some of it. Um, we'll go through a bit of a pizza order. We'll go through the one thing you cannot live without in your working week. We'll do a bit of a quiz, talk all things business. Uh, and this week we are joined by CEO of one of the biggest social agencies in the world with offices in London, New York, Los Angeles and Toronto. They own channels such as Viral Thread and Twisted an entrepreneurial e-commerce giant, the king of the jungle, <laughs> Jamie Baldy. What an intro. That <laughs> was an intro, that was. Really. That. Usually at this stage, right, every single person has an intro because Dan <laughs> will make one, but Dan can't be here today. And um, he lazily didn't put one together. So we're just going to do one off the cuff now. Right. So you've got an intro, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They you. told me about this this morning, by the way. So I've not. <laughs> was, was, it, was that not the intro? <laughs> no. Oh no. There's just a, like this a is the jingle. jingle. Right. Every okay. guest gets an intro jingle, and I'm right, not. Right. not you're not having one. Like you've got to have one. So we will just do it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Baldy. <laughs> We that, was, that was amazing. Working. We no, could probably you, make a better one than that yeah, and put it in. No, 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 I think we'll keep that. that. Was, you want that on your phone, don't you? Yeah, that's nice gonna, I'm going to, this is that back every night. <laughs> Cheers, guys, appreciate that. So, <clears throat> Jamie Bolding. <clears throat> yes. How's your week been? It's all right. You missed it, didn't I'm you? I'm so sorry. I mean, this, <laughs> this is one thing. I always meant to, yeah. You're looking over. Do you want to go again? So, Jamie Bolding. How's your week been? Seamless. Really uh, yeah, it's been great. It's been decent. It's uh, I'm I'm back in London. I spend a lot of time in New York these days. So spending just about half my time out on NY with a team out there. So when I'm back in London, it's uh, it's a nice time to catch up with my mates, catch up with all all the office out in London. And uh, yeah, it's been a been a solid start to the week. It's a four day week as well. So yeah, got Easter weekend to look forward to. When which is which is actually a bad thing. Obviously, I hate that. Um, you know, hate spending time away from work, hate the fact that these guys go home. <laughs> <laughs> Trojan. Want them, them yeah. working 24-7. <laughs> no, I'm joking. So you got good. anything planned for this weekend? Or? Um, I'm going, I'm actually playing a bit of golf this weekend. Oh, nice. Going down to Ipswich for a couple of days to play a bit of golf. And then I'm going to see my mum, my sister. Going walking for a couple of days with them. Um, so yeah, nice relaxed weekend. All about weekend. walking at the minute, mate, aren't you? All yeah, I went for a walking holiday last weekend as well. It was the Yorkshire Dales, the Three Peaks. Mm. <clears throat> bit of a rambler. Well, a bit of a climber, really. You know, there's lots of steep inclines, a bit of downhill. It's uh, a stick. Yeah, no, no sticks needed, mate. No sticks needed. Just, uh, just a pair of trainers. Um, yeah, not usually a walker, but. So when are you out, out. Uh, when are you back out in the US? Uh, back out next week. So I'm flying out next Tuesday, sending another person from the UK office over there um, uh, to head up the sales team. So um, he's uh, yeah joining that team for the first time. So for the people who don't know who you are or listen to the podcast, the, yeah. the, the few yeah. that don't know, um, what, what is Jungle Creations? Yeah, all right, okay. So I mean, put simply, Jungle is a media marketing and commerce business. So on the media side, we only operate seven media brands that are digitally focused. Used to, one of them used to be called Viral Thread. It's now called VT. We rebranded it. Come on, Lee. Do your research. Oh, I, 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 I knew that. I just, I just read it out. <laughs> I'm like Ron Burgundy, mate. You just got to like, give me a break. So we've got VT <laughs> in the entertainment space. We've got Twisted, Food and Drink. We've got Craft Factory and Crafts. 4 9, which is female first. Level Fitness. Fitness, World Unknown. And Kidspiration in the parenting. So there are seven media brands there. So big, big on Facebook, big on Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat. 
Um, uh, so we make money on ads on our website or ads on, on our social sites or social pages. Um, so that's the media side of things and also doing a lot of branded content obviously with brands. Um, so, you know, recipe videos on Twisted or um, viral videos on, on VT. Then on the marketing side, we have our own creative agency. So that's when we kind of take all those insights that we have from our media channels and our media brands and the expertise of making content day in, day out. And we go to brands and we help them out. So all the work that we do with brands directly, whether it be creating content for them or distributing their content or managing their social or doing influencer marketing or performance marketing, that's our kind of marketing side of the business. And on the commerce side, we thought about a year ago, we're really good at building media brands on social and building communities and get generating shitloads of views. And we're really good at um, driving performance and doing marketing for our clients. Why can't we mix those two things and actually do it for ourselves and sell products to our communities and sell products to our audiences? So we started a commerce arm selling novelty gifts this time last year and it went really well. And we were like, right, let's make a brand out of it. So we created a brand called Lovemals, which sells personalized, um, personalized, I guess items of clothing like socks or even mugs or towels um, that have your animal. No. <laughs> I, I actually have got a pair of my missus yeah. probably some with her face on Love it for that. Christmas, mate. Yeah, they yeah. have your pet that's print amazing. onto the socks. But yeah, that's the, that's the start of our commerce business. But ultimately it's about, you know, taking what we do as a media marketing business and then actually uh, using that to sell our own products. So that's what jungle is in a nutshell. So it's a bit of an ecosystem. We, we say the word ecosystem a lot. We're kind of like building out an ecosystem that is spread across those three different pillars. But yeah, it's, it's a little bit confusing because we can't come out and be like, we're an agency, because we're not. We have an agency. We can't, can't come out and say we're a publisher because we are, but we also do other things. We can't say we're a commerce business because, again, we do other things. So media, marketing, and commerce. Hopefully that made sense. I think it sounds great. <laughs> oh, it sounds great. Um, so just very quickly, what I'm going to do is just jump in. We're not ordering pizza today, but right. every single person is going to want to know whether um, you've got a decent pizza order or whether you're going to lose whip points. Whip coin, sorry. What's whip, whoa, whoa, whip, whip coin. coin. How's your wheat bin coin? The <laughs> new cryptocurrency coming to market, coins. mate. You want to buy in? Right. We'll talk about it afterwards. So how, much, how many coins have we got so, so uh, far? Well, you start with zero, mate. I start with zero. Uh, right, it was okay, a good, good intro, up. but you're not getting a point. I'm pretty right. stingy with the points. Usually, Danny's like <laughs> flossing them out. No, Baba, so you're a bit wounded. He's not at, not here. But right. so, uh, and at the end of the end of the show, uh, this is actually the last episode of this series. Um, and whoever is at the highest, uh, whoever's at the top of the sort of like Top Gear league table esque type thing, uh, well, he's going to get some OTT merch. So, you know, you, I know you've got a lot of merch Big yourself. States. I know you're selling stuff, mate, but this, this stuff's priceless. So, um, so what do you order on your pizza, mate? You've just said you don't like cooking, really. You're a, you're a bit of a food orderer. Yeah, yeah I am. What's the, uh, what's the pizza order? What's the go-to? Uh, I am big on the pizzas. I used, I used to order Domino's when I was younger. So, like, uni, I was big on Domino's. But after Uber Eats came out, um, just go for the nice... Artisan pizzas, you know. What? What's your yeah. topping, mate? Nice, uh, nice wood oven. Um, uh, right. Pinch on it. who he was. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, right, pizza. Well, I mean, go to. I mean, actually, I mean, right. So usually it's create your own. I don't really go for something that's already on the menu, like a pepperoni or a chicken. I like to mix it up. So if I'm really hungry, I mix those two. So I'll get four toppings usually: pepperoni. Chicken, sweet corn, and onion. That's, That's the four. It's a solid. I like the fact that you like. I, don't, I just don't take off the menu. I'm yeah. a bespoke kind of and guy. Then, and then get a shitload of mayonnaise and ketchup and then dip it in. That's, I'm we're, big, I'm big mark him down. He's getting one for that, mate. It's a decent <laughs> order, isn't it? He didn't go back. Basically, we've had no one get marked down yet because we're just waiting for some. And, it, and actually, Ad, what would yours be? What's your go to, mate? Ham and pineapple. Yeah, you'd get you'd lose a point. Yeah, because it's a weak yeah, shitty order. order. It's, yeah. it's really bad. Oh, even I know it's shit. You're the only person. It's standard, and pineapple's terrible. Ham and so. pineapple. Yeah, I'm yeah. a bit weird. Though. Shocker. Uh, stuffed crust. Stuff. Yeah, stuffed crust. Pull it back round. No, no, okay. no really. shit. I think you probably could compensate um, Jamie as well for getting the VT thing. Oh yeah, I get it. Probably coin there. Yeah, oh God, Got a brand name. Out of like, who's yeah, am right, I, who's I, side am I on yours? So you, can, yeah, you, you, <laughs> mate, you pick your own side, mate. Okay, yeah. You forget where your bread What's your main you brand on, on the shed, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. There's a point there. Oh, it's got God. A I mean, you can have one for that. Banter. Classic podcast banter. Classic po- <laughs> bit of potty banter. 
Um, he's going. We're going to leave, and he's going to be like, "Fucking pricks! Just got got everything wrong. Like, <laughs> no, don't yeah. even know. Don't even know it the main happens. channel name." It happens so much. I mean, we shouldn't have rebranded to VT from Vars. You know, what was the initials? But we just wanted to get rid of that. You know, the word viral. The word viral, yeah, but know, still brand, keep the brand. Bad yeah, connotations. Do, but we knew. Yeah, we, people knew it as Vars. So yeah, we thought it'd be a good, good solution. But two years later, you know, people think it's Vars. The reason. <laughs> the reason, <laughs> the reason, the reason <laughs> what I did was I read it out wrong so that you could just clarify what the difference was with it. Why you did it yeah obviously people listening gonna know anyway yeah. so we covered that um, so job done so you've got you know it sounds like you got a lot on um traveling between the us and the uk uh every yeah. what every, how, how often uh, two or three weeks every every two or three weeks that's yeah. uh that's a schedule that is isn't it yeah so it's it's all right i see um it's pretty good because when i fly to new york i have jet lag so i wake up at like five or six a.m and i try and try and keep that for like a week <laughs> and i go out on the weekend and obviously fuck it all up and i'm back to normal normal sleeping but i can get up at six go to the gym do work then go to the office at 9 a.m so i actually really like the the jet lag kind of that you get when you fly over when you fly back it's a bit shit but just miss a night's sleep and it's all good so this company has gone through like mega growth hasn't it yeah huge growth how do you handle that you know CEO of a business that's growing at a rate that normally could quite easily like bulldozer the the person who started it. Do you know what I mean? Like if you don't improve and don't, you know, keep on top of that, a business of of this size could eat you up. How how do you how do you balance travelling and still then making sure that you've, you know, strategically sort of on the game with it and Yeah. So I guess I guess growth growth wise, we started in uh, July two thousand fourteen, so just about four and a half years ago now. Um, and we grew pretty aggressively. I mean, it was kind of a slow start in the first year, but after the first full year, we grew like seriously quickly for you know, the next three years. And I'd say maybe well, probably the, this time last year, um, maybe like January, February last year, that's when we kind of stopped growing. And since then, we've kind of plateaued out just because we grew so quickly, too quickly, and we found ourselves in all sorts of trouble <laughs> because... Growing that quickly, not having maybe the operations or the systems in place or the processes or the right people or, you know, just a bunch of things that happen when you grow so fast and you're not really building that infrastructure, you'll decide just pushing for revenue. Um, so we hit, the, we hit those problems a year and a bit ago um, and it's been like a real challenge since then to, to fix those issues. Um, and that's kind of been our focus for the last year and a bit. So now it's leveled out. We, we took investment um, for the first time in September last year, um, just to help steady the ship, invest in some more senior senior talent, I guess, um, amongst other things as well. Um, and that helped massively, you know, bringing some senior people in um, and really just working on the structure and the systems and the process. All the boring stuff you don't really think about when you're that small. Um, and you're not really that fussed about because you're like, oh, it's not going to affect revenue. But, you know, when you get to a size and we didn't have a HR in place, like we didn't really have an operations team, it was, yeah, it was a bit of a shambles. So that was a tough time. But now it's all good because we've got all the teams in place. We've got, you know, yeah, amazing teams across the board. It's siloed off into, into individual teams that know what they're, what the, what they're responsible for. Um, so for me, it's kind of, um, my job has changed a lot, you know, instead of driving revenue and driving parts of the business, it's just about overseeing everyone and making sure that everyone's supported and those systems are in place and working well. So how do you stay ahead and sort of maintain that though? So I know you said you, you go to the gym, so you, you improve on your, your, you know, your health. Yeah. What about your mind? I have a life coach once a week yeah. and I read a lot, you yeah. know, what do you do to sort of like yeah, it's a funny stay one. ahead? Because I think obviously I speak to a lot of founders and I'm part of actually this uh, this founders group where there's eight of us and we meet up once a, once a month for um, three hours or four, four hours. Every Where'd you meet, mate? Uh, <laughs> 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 it's a different place each time we've, we've done it in here, but we go to a different venue each time. <sighs> and uh, yeah, it's cool. It's called like a tribe thing. And it's like a thing that a bunch of founders do. I don't know if you've heard it before, but it's like a really set system where you talk about your highs, your lows. So that's the, ma that's the biggest thing that I do in terms of like self-help, I guess. Yeah. Um, just because it's something that I have not been against, but I guess I've been quite stubborn to try and figure out myself, which isn't a good thing at all. You know, I wouldn't actually, I wouldn't kind of advise that approach at all. But you know, me, <laughs> nah, <laughs> mate, I'm all right. I yeah, it. sorted it. No, it's terrible, terrible. That's kind of 
<coughs> what I was like when I was younger a bit, and I was like, I've got this. I'm sort of, I was kind of very tunnel vision. Um, people give me advice. I was like, no, you don't know what you're talking about. Fuck it. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I've, got, I've got this shit. Um, and I used, to, I used to be way more stressed back in the day. Um, and I kind of I say to some people when at the start when we started the business off like my highs were like this and my lows were like down here and it was just like a fucking horrible roller coaster, emotional roller coaster, which I was loving at the same time but then in the, in the low points it was yeah. it was horrendous but it's levelled out and obviously got way more support and you know speaks a lot more people like a bunch of other founders don't have a life coach don't have like a therapist or anything like that right now it's definitely something I'd look to do probably down the line um but um, yeah, I, I don't really read that much either. I have this kind of thing about advice. You know, there's just so much advice out there, like books and fucking videos and shit. And it's just like, I think it does more harm than good. I really do. Um, from my perspective, when I've looked into it in the past and tried to get advice, all I feel is that I'm doing a shit job because everyone else has got it figured out. Yeah. Like, honestly, that's all I ever felt. I was just like, fuck this shit. This, these guys have got it sussed out. Like, I, just, I found it so demotivate, demotivating. And, and yeah, you know, you know, I can't want to name names because, you know, like the big you know, the, the influencers and like the LinkedIn's and the YouTube's and stuff. And they convince you they've just got it all sussed out. And it just made me feel like shit. So I was like, no, fuck this. Fuck all of them. I don't want to read or, or listen to that stuff or consume it. So I've kind of turned my back on that kind of stuff um, if, if, if quite a lot. On the on the book side, like that's better because it's actually scientific. I think what yeah. pisses me off about the advice people is they're not educated or um, skilled to give advice and it can be quite dangerous sometimes. They just maybe got a bit lucky like I did, like a, you know, a young person and they think now they're kind of in the position to tell people how to live their lives and and I don't like that. Um, I do like reading professors or you know people that have um you know like the um you know that the, have, have done like research over the years and like philosophical kind of arguments and that, that's the kind of stuff that i kind of try and read now okay. um but yeah so i've got an interesting kind of approach to the whole kind of advice and help thing you you just mentioned then about like highs and lows what yeah. has been the biggest high with with jungle would you say? Oh, I could list off the lows, mate, honestly. <laughs> but the Top highs. Three, then go on. But the highs. <laughs> well, we've had our page deleted in the past. Oh, we the, 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 the lows here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, go on. Give us the lows. It's more juicy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, we're highs. We're highs. Okay, highs. highs first, then lows, because I want to come back to that page delete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it, mate. We were all in the office going, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, highs. Hi, hi, uh, for highs, I'm always. Um, the office moves are always a big thing for me. Like moving into a new space, yeah. you know, looking around and being like, kind of, you know, I, this is something like we built. Like that's awesome. I love the office moves. We haven't had a fucking office move for two and a half years, so <laughs> I mean, you do I mean, one. I mean, high for a while. <laughs> uh, but no, office moves are always good. It was funny. I used to because this place. I mean, you go to the toilet when you're in here. No, no, no. So when you go to the toilet and you walk out and you see the office. So it's the first like year and a half. When I was in here, every time I'd come out of having a talk, going for a piss, I'd come out and be like, fuck it, no, uh, look at this shit. No, I would love it. it. I literally, yeah. and, uh, and I was like, I wonder if I'll ever stop having this. And I, I think I kind of have, which is unfortunate because I thought I'd just always have it. But I'm always appreciative every day of looking around, you know, because we've got an open pan office and you see all these heads, you come out of the meter and you're like, fucking hell, Jesus. And so I'd never like, forget that. And I love that. Like That's something that's just like a constant high for me. Um, and especially when things are going well and people are happy, that's just like a kind of constant. And that's the thing with the highs and lows. Like it's not about your, your one-offs and like, you're really happy. It's just about like a constant level of just like being happy and content with it. So yeah, just just seeing the, the size of the, the size of the team and, and the people enjoying it. That's a, a constant high. The lows. The lows. <laughs> the low, the low, the lows. lows. <laughs> oh fucking hell! Cash flow problems. I mean. You know, without the ops team, I was the, I was the CFO, I was the head of ops, I was all of this stuff, you know, and all of that pressure on on me, and that was stressful, and uh, yeah, I mean, we yeah we had our page lead for a few months for copyright infringement, so we had to sort out, um, and that was when we were about you know the page was about twelve million likes, it was a large I said no it wasn't that's no, a lie it was like five million likes, but it was still one of the biggest Facebook pages yeah, yeah. out there, and we were down for three months. <clears throat> and I had to figure out, and I had a team of about 30 or 40 people, 
And I had to put on a brave face that entire time, which is... Uh, It'll be fine. Yeah, I was is like, nah, yeah, 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 so yeah, good, so good. Mark's so good. just been on the phone. He says so, he'll give it us back in a bit. Jamie, why are you um, pulling your hair out in the, uh, in the balcony <laughs> area? And why you got a ball patch on your head? <laughs> and, nah, it's all good. I'm fine. <laughs> now, that, that was a big no. Um, yeah, there's, you know, the, the, yeah, cash flow issues and page deletions down there with a bunch of a bunch of lows. And also, you know, when we grew too quickly a year and a bit ago, there was a real cultural um, negative culture, I'd say, in, in the business. You know, speak openly and honestly about that. I don't mind speaking about it because we've, we've passed it now and I feel that as a company, you're never going to always be perfect and we grew too quickly and we didn't have the process in place to support everyone um, and it led to a really negative culture. Um, uh, which we were able to fix because our culture has always been so good and then it just kind of went bad for maybe six or six to nine months um, and we've now fixed it and we've now put it back I mean culture is a constant like work in progress but you know yeah we had, we had some low points with the culture um, yeah about a year and a half ago so. it's hard though isn't it because I think when you're going through growth the culture part is the bit that I think as founders, the culture part is the bit, depending on who you are and depending on what the business is, but I think particularly in like media and what, you know, what we all do, the culture part naturally is like such a, we're people business, aren't we? Yeah. It's such a big part of what we do. And it's the bit that you love and that you get the most reward out of, like you just said, then looking out, you come out of the office, see all these happy faces, see all yeah. that. But with like a lot of growth very, very quickly, yeah. ultimately you don't really, at scale, you don't know who's coming in yeah. all the time. Do you know what I mean? And I think you can, you can, and when you're trying to hire, I guess, at such a rate, then that's where... Yeah. And and just, like, people are it, people are difficult, aren't they? And then when you start doing new teams and then people don't gel and then it, and yeah. it becomes... It, it's I just... Think, I think because it's like, obviously, there's loads of different personality types and loads of different people out there. It's never really the p- people's fault. It's, I think it's the business fault. And when you build a big business, you've got to have those systems in place to support everyone, no matter kind of, like, what kind of person they are. Essentially, the problem that we had with our culture was that... When you're a small business and you know, you're know 10 or 20 people and you're in one room and you're working late and you're working really hard, but your focus with the culture is to make it fun. So you go out for drinks and you make it all fun and you, make, you want to make sure that everyone's enjoying themselves. But the work hard thing is just like de facto, like it, it happens because you're in that room together and you're fucking working hard. <coughs> so then I, we kind of focused on making everyone happy the whole time. And then we got to like 100 and we were just making everyone happy, like trying to make everyone happy. It's like, take on a whole labor to everyone's creep, like all expenses paid. And uh, like, this is like during like the latter part of our hiring phase, gets like 100 people. Um, and we were focusing so much on, on you know, making everyone sure, making sure everyone was happy and like loving life. And like, this is the best thing ever. And then when the business, you know, we were like, we've got 100 people, like, why isn't performance improving? And we were like, guys, like, the performance needs to improve. And they're like, what I, you know like but no one ever told me about the expectations or my targets they weren't the targets in place so all these and it sounds so basic now no, you know, well, it sounds we, so uh, basic uh, uh, yeah like we're going through it a bit probably now as well in terms of like bringing more people on and like you know you're really good at spotting when there's a lack of process whereas I'm a, a little bit more like we need to, like, this is the vision. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah, and I, I think I was probably too much like that. Yeah, I mean, I guess we're looking that so way. You're enjoying it, can... right? You're liking it. You love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's yeah. fucking yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's, it's really interesting. It's always going to be the hardest thing, I think, isn't it, when you're trying to grow a business is keeping people happy and the culture right, but obviously, like, making money, you know, like, yeah. Making sure that bottom line's there and that the growth well, is going to be like, sustainable, and you know, yeah, you got a responsibility to your entire team, and our responsibility is to make sure everyone's kind of happy and enjoying it and loving life and happy at work. But then our responsibility is to also not fire anyone and have to make anyone redundant and yeah, to make sure we've got enough yeah. money to pay people. So then that responsibility with everyone having fun, everyone enjoying themselves, we've also got to make a shitload of profit to you know to it's make money to, to pay hundred people. Yeah. And you've got to balance off the, you know, that, that work hard thing with the, with the play hard stuff. And we kind of lost that balance. Um, and that took, yeah, a fair few months to repair. But you've got it all back now. Yes. So it's all good. Yeah. Never, never perfect. No. Never will be. Um, when you're a big, when you're a big company, I, you know, we're 150 odd now across four continent, four countries. Mental. Um, there's always a work in progress. But I like that. I like, I've, I've gone into the ops side of things. I, it, I think it's one of my main jobs is to make sure those operations and systems are there supporting everyone so that when we kind of set those targets and expectations, they feel supported and they feel like they're getting perks when they do hit their targets. They do And they do get their holidays and they do have fun times. And it's not just, you know, there is that balance with, yeah, we performed well and yeah, we have a fucking great time as well. So... 
It's all good. It's all good. It's been a long year. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what we're going to do now, Ad is going to jump into the quiz. This is your opportunity, mate, to try and beat the Love Gun boys on yeah. the table. What's the I mean, quiz? What, 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 what's the question? You, well, you'll, you'll find out, mate. Five <laughs> questions. Yeah. Uh, you've got the opportunity to win five whip coins. You're currently on two. You're on two. What did the Love Gun boys get? Eight, nine, something like that. They were like mid-table, Yeah. Who's top at the minute? Adam Callow. Yeah. What did he get? 16? 17. I How mean, did that's, he get 17? Uh, he did a double or quits and, and um, got it right. You yeah. might as well just try that at I'll the end. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a gambler. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big gambler. <laughs> so, um, well, I'll give you a heads up on that then. You're going to get five questions, all multiple choice. At the end of these five questions, you're going to have the opportunity to chuck a multiple choice at us right. for a double or quits. Okay. Adam Barry, go. Question one. Okay, question one. Straight in. In which country is the Jungle Book set? Is it A, India, B, Sri Lanka, or C, Brazil? Oh, oh, oh. Shit. Think about, think about the characters here. <laughs> well, to be fair, Mowgli could be from any one of those. Mm. Yeah, I'm just thinking about one in particular. Um, I think it's either India or Sri Lanka. Uh, one of the two. Ooh. What's he going to so... go for? I'm trying to think like what's the worst what's got a bigger jungle India correct <laughs> oh, they get harder get in <laughs> question number two what percentage of all the world's species live in the jungle is it A 80% B 50% or C 95% Ooh, 50, 85 or 90 80, 50 or 95. 80, yeah. 50 or 95, sorry. Mm. 80, 50 or 95. So what percentage of the world's species live in, live in the jungle? Live yeah. in the jungle. Um, I God. guess the theme I mean, does, well. it, does it include like cats and dogs and that? <laughs> or is it just... Yeah? All animals, all species. All, all species. That is a mental question. Like, where are you all getting species. this shit from, Jamie? Um, right, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with 80%. Oh, it's wrong. Oh, <laughs> what is it? It's 50%. 50, shit. That is a lot, isn't it? There's yeah. a lot, but I think it's that's hard. Mad, mad 95 through me on. You can't really speculate that, can you? I don't understand how you would try and work it out. Right, question number three. Which is the top layer of the jungle called? Is it A, a canopy, B, a penthouse, or C, how do you pronounce C? Emergence? Yep. Um, I, well, I hope I know this because we were, we were, we, just, we got we built a new creative agency called the Wild, um, and we were looking at names. It used to be called Treehouse. Um, but we were looking at names. What we could, uh, what the what the creative agency could be called, and Canopy was uh, was one of them. Um, <laughs> that, what's, not, what's your answer? Not, not saying that's the answer. <laughs> it was fishing. Like, not oh, saying, oh, canopy. Not yeah. saying, okay, it's not that. <laughs> Penthouse was the other. Not saying that's the answer. I mean, I was going to say that, but your reactions <laughs> led me to say C. Emergence. Correct. Oh <laughs> He's got it right. There we go. Why would you have to throw Latin well, words in there? the big tree. Oh, I thought it was canopy, yeah? Yeah, that's what I thought. Sure, that's right. Go on, I'm, I'm going to do that. It's like the, that guy who's cheating who wants to be a millionaire just like says all the questions and yeah, waits yeah. for a cough. I'm going to say the questions just <laughs> look at your faces. <laughs> yeah. and Right. thinking this one this is a tricky one because I'm not, definitely not going to pronounce these correctly so question number four what is the Latin word for jungle is it A arbor B bushicus or C saltu hey, I was actually chatting earlier about what my next tattoo should be and if it's if it's a good sounding Latin word I think I should just get that yeah, yeah. shit um, I agree should Based on what I want it to be, because it would sound like it would be like a better tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna do it again. <laughs> um, either the first, what were they again? I can't remember. Arba, yeah, Bushicus, yeah, or Saltu. All right, C, Saltu. Correct. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get that tattoo. I've got to get that tattoo. Okay. How do you spell it? S A L T U. Yeah. Kind of looks like salt, doesn't it? Salt, salt to you, salt you, salt for you. I've got salt tattooed in my arm, Jamie. <laughs> yeah, you it. can't get it now. Doesn't matter. Shit. <laughs> right, question number five. Final question. How many acres of rainforest are cut down every minute? Ooh. 
Ooh. Is it A, 150 acres, B, 63, or C, 205? Right, so I've heard it's the, it's heard it's the size of two football pitches every minute. How big's a football? How many acres? No, that's that no, can't, be, can't right. be right. That can't be right. No, no that's wrong. What, so what are the options again? 150, 150, 63, yeah. or 205. Wow, they're all quite close together, aren't they? It's quite... Um, 150. He's got it right. <laughs> Wrong. Is that, no, right. 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 Is that a clean sweep? No. no. Oh. Four, he got the, got the 80%, 50%, 80% wrong. 80% wrong than he said oh, four. There's shit loads of cats and dogs. Wow. They, they bring I, think that that's I thought you was going to go for, for that 50 because you said, well, what about all the cats and dogs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Balances yeah, it out, That's it? what I was going to go with. The, 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 like, when I first thought about it, then I was like, actually, jungles. So that is, I think, one of the high scores we've had on the quiz. Uh, four Again, out of five. Sometimes. I mean, it's a bit of an obscure one. I obviously like the link, Jamie, so well done. Um, <clears throat> so you've now got six points. This is now your opportunity. You have 10 seconds to think of a question that has a, um, a B, and a C. Okay. If you get it, if we get it right, you get nothing. Okay. Um, if uh, you get it right, then you double your points, mate. Could be your chance to, to knock your way up above Love Gun. Oh, my God. Right. Okay. Ah, oh, mate, it, can it be, it can be anything related? Does it have to be jungle related? Doesn't have, no, no, you haven't got to follow the jungle theme. Can be, uh, can be whatever you want. It can. Right. Um, mate, this is very, very difficult. I actually have 10 seconds. So I've still got more than 10 seconds to think of a tough multiple choice question. I mean, it doesn't need to be tough. It can be easy if you want, mate. <laughs> what did I have for breakfast this morning? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> imagine. It can be that, mate. Well, yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> oh no! It's not going to be that. It's not going to be that. It's not going right, to be that. Okay. But it, 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 we make it personal to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, all right. I mean, we're just going to assume you're going to tell the truth here, mate. Yeah, yeah I'll tell, tell yeah, the truth. Yeah, I'll okay. tell the truth. All Maybe right. write it. You don't got no pen. You write it on your hand or something. But, all right. So, in what city was I born? All right. A, New Delhi. B, Melbourne. C, Tokyo. Oh, shit on it. What I usually do is stare at people and you can yeah, easily you were, see. you were staring at me. Uh, <laughs> easily, <laughs> yeah. Creepy. I was rubbing my knees as well. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty intimidated as I was saying those, um, saying those options. See. Like, um, uh, Tom at Love Gun did this and his was just pathetic. <laughs> it, when, he, when he'd said the third one, I looked and I was like, it's the third one, mate. And then Chris was like, I, even I could see that that was it. Um, <laughs> what are you saying? I would go with B, which is Melbourne. I'm gonna. I would go with. I would go with Hong Kong. <laughs> that wasn't an option, was it? Oh, where was it? <laughs> Tokyo was. It? No, to- what was it? Tokyo, <laughs> Melbourne, and yeah. Was it Hong Kong and Tokyo are different places? Yeah, no, no. What was the first one? Yeah. There was three. You said ABC. Was it supposed to be? Yeah, four? yeah, no, no. There was three. Sorry, what were they? New Delhi. Yeah. Melbourne. Yeah. Tokyo. Oh. I was thinking. <laughs> I don't know where I got Hong from. Hong Kong from. Uh. Very struggling now. Look. You reckon Melbourne? I don't, I don't reckon it's going to be Melbourne. Where's your show? You can pick what you want, can't you? <laughs> si- sizing me up. Proper yeah, sizing yeah, you up. Yeah. Oh, well, you said it now, ain't well, you? So I've got to go it Melbourne. Looks a bit Australian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going, to go, we're going to go Melbourne. We can find this afterwards if you're lying as well. I can confirm. That's incorrect. Oh, 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 no. Um, is it New a, Delhi? Got a Japanese passport, oh, my arm and everything. Wow. Yeah, Tokyo. Yeah, yeah oh, I, was hiding, I was hiding that. Was I was you? hiding that when I was saying it, yeah. So, oh, didn't want to give, those, uh, didn't want to give any clues. That is. What, um, when did you, so you were born there? Yeah, born there. Lived there for two years. Don't what? remember anything, unfortunately. Been back there once, actually, back when I was 17. Um, went back there for a few days. Um, saw my old house. No way. But yeah, then my parents moved back down to London. Um, well, not London, like Guildford, just south of London. Um, yeah, when I was two. But it's cool, isn't it? It's yeah. pretty cool, yeah. yeah. Tokyo, cool place. That is a cool place. So yeah. you're now on 12 points, mate. Well done. Fucking you, uh, huge. You ran, you, ran the, uh, you ran the gauntlet and won. Um, so we've mentioned Love Gun a few times. Yes. Um, you just mentioned your hometown. Yeah. Is that how you know the boys at Love Gun or, or yeah, Chris yeah. in particular? He's an old friend, is he? Yeah, Chris was um, Chris is in my, my college. Um, yeah, so I went to so I was at a school in Guildford, then went to a college in a town called Godamin, just down the road. And uh, yeah, like a big old college, like 2,000 people, and then met a whole bunch of new people, and he was one of them. And yeah, been mates ever since. Yeah, he's an old, good old pal of mine. And then we, were, we had to rebrand some of our 
um, some of our brands. And like VT. Like yeah. VT. Yeah, yeah, I remember it. <laughs> and I uh, got a bit of help from him. And uh, yeah, he was he was doing uh, design for the last kind of what, four or five years. Started up his own agency. And yeah, did a bit of work with them. They've, yeah. they've been amazing. Got some good stories. About yeah. You, mate. Yeah, yeah. Hell. Got some real good ones. He's a bit too open, isn't he? He is a bit sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bit much. Talk about now, yeah, yeah, we're we're trying to keep this stuff about. secret. <laughs> yeah. He's out there <laughs> telling the whole world. Maybe we'll talk about it off air, you know. So... What are the plans to grow, mate? You've obviously, you, you know, you said you sort of plateaued out slightly in terms of your recruitment drive. Obviously, not as a business because well, yeah, you're still moving forward. You've opened up in, you know, in New York. You've got yeah. um, offices Toronto. And, um, what's what's the plans? Well, we plateaued out in terms of headcount. I mean, I always used to think that like headcount was that barometer of success. Like, how many people you got? 150 sick. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. usually like, yeah, dropping, walking out. Yeah, into the yeah. fucking hundreds, mate, whatever. Um, nah, so got over that. <laughs> Not all about size, because that's the quickest way to fucking kill your business. Um, the plan now is, so we got that investment cash. And we've now invested in a, um, a bunch of different areas. So some people and some obviously new offices. Um, different parts of business like systems etc I've been talking about so like the idea now is we've built that media marketing and commerce foundation and we've got kind of inroads in each of those areas and now it's about investing um, heavily in the media brands so making each media brand you know a household name um, and then building out the creative agency so we can you know do way more for our clients and this may either be through investing our own profits or raising money or even acquiring businesses so on the marketing side we might you know acquire an influencer agency or we might acquire an events agency basically anything that can help us in each of those three pillars and the commerce side we might build our own commerce brands we might acquire some commerce brands so ultimately we want to build like an ecosystem that's a market leader in, in media brands and digital media and you know, leading the way in, in in marketing and focusing online on that marketing side of things um, uh, and then also building like the next um, biggest kind of commerce brands that, that are utilizing social and the amazing opportunities that has to to build um, amazing products and sell them to a you know new generation so we want to build a massive you know ecosystem and everyone talks about consolidation at the moment and that's been a kind of a buzzword for the last couple of years because there's all these companies have got so much they've raised so much money in the u.s like all these digital media businesses and they suddenly realize that digital media is actually not that great <laughs> and all these businesses <laughs> are now making cuts and going bust and it isn't that it isn't that great because digital media is tough but it's a great business to have to build off a marketing business to build off commerce businesses. So we're just trying to consolidate within those three pillars and whether that be building our own in each area or acquiring businesses, that's what we want to do. And um, yeah, I have no interest in setting up. You know, I'm only 28, so I'm going to carry on doing this for the next 10, 20 years and make a bloody large jungle. Big old jungle. A big old jungle. <clears throat> and you can uh, obviously climb to the top of that at the emergence and uh, stick your head above it <laughs> yes I like that that's it right the top. so nothing big then no, no, no big plans <laughs> sounds like you've got a, um, a giant of a job on you on your hands um, and my next question was going to be do you see yourself in the agency in the agency world forever um, no because I don't see myself in the agency world now you know I don't think that we have it's not jungle creations isn't an agency um, it's uh it's a business and the descriptive the descriptive the description you want to use that business is it can change but the boring one is media marketing commerce business but it's not it's not an agency in itself you know we have a, an agency with, within that business um but yeah for the the beauty of what we have is that i'm never going to go off now and sell the business so i can start a new business i can just start new businesses within jungle you know we've got that foundation we've got that ecosystem and we've like, you know, if I think of a new app idea, we'll go on, build a team, we'll do it within Jungle. You know, so that's always keeps it exciting because I'm a little bit, um, you know, I like like new ideas and <laughs> struggle with focus sometimes. But the business now um, uh, kind of lends itself to that because yeah. you know I can drop into the media side of the business, get stuck into that for a little bit. I can drop into the marketing side of the business, get stuck in with clients. I can drop into the commerce side. I can think of new commerce ideas. So it's super exciting and it gives a everyone that works in the business the opportunity to kind of get lightly involved in each business and take learnings from each different department as well so so yeah so I'm not, I'm not going anywhere not staying as just an agency um, uh, and yeah we're going to be building some some cool stuff and yeah whether it be apps or products or new media brands or start building you know shows or programs who knows you know? is there anything that you can talk about lots of these other projects is there anything that you're currently involved um, in so pretty excited right now on about the commerce space um 
I guess you know, without giving too much away, we are seeing a massive trend um, in commerce products with um, purpose and purpose around. So we, we basically look at our business and say, the beauty of our media business is that we know what everyone's talking about on a daily basis because we're producing that content, they're sharing our content and we're there during that conversation across all platforms. So we know what people are speaking about in real time. And you know it's not rocket science what people are speaking about in real time, but when media starts impacting what people do on a daily, on a daily, daily basis in terms of what they buy, where they go, like what they do, that makes that conversation really powerful. And that conversation around you know, the reduction of plastic, reducing your carbon footprint, you know, living a more sustainable life um, and causing a less negative impact, that is the, like, the force and the driver behind e-commerce of the future. And what people buy now um, is going to be based so much more around the purpose behind the brand, the footprint that's left. So yeah, I guess like, we're seeing a massive opportunity in building brands around that. Um, uh, and being transparent and, and utilizing social media for all that's good for, which is transparency, connectivity, um, you know, globalization, all this amazing stuff that social does, and all the negative press it gets right now is it's pretty harsh because social is a fucking incredible thing. You know, it's changed all our lives for the last everyone's lives for you know the last ten years, and it's going to create this next wave. You know, this is kind of like wave one. What's happened in the first ten years in terms of how we communicate, but now it's going to impact everything else in terms of what we buy, what we do, like everything. So it's like, we now want to invest in what that next part is. Um, and we think that loyalty to old brands, I don't know if I should say this, should I? Because what well, if brands are listening and they're our fucking clients? But you know, loyal, 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 loyal. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> well, if, you're, if you do work at traditional brands, come to us, we'll help you. <laughs> we'll, help, we'll help the new, uh, the new, uh, the new age be loyal to you. But. You know, loyalty is dying on these old brands because there's no transparency, there's no purpose, there's no meaning behind. Oh fuck, fuck it, I'll say it anyway. But not the brands that we work with because we only Obviously, work with meaningful you brands. You only work with yeah. the best brands. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Covered but it, well, well done. it kind of opens up this this in massive opportunity to to become the new product or become the new service that people buy into if you give that transparent story and you tell them where you sourced it from and who's working for it and how much you're paying them and you're not doing slave labour. And it still fascinates me that so many of these brands out there are still doing shady shit, like horrible stuff. And it's going to all become exposed because the world that we now live in is all about transparency and all this stuff is going to get exposed. So if you build a business which is just transparent from day dot, and I'm talking specifically about commerce right now, and you say what that supply chain is and what the carbon footprint was and when you buy it and what, what happens to it when you throw it away. Because there's no transparency around what, what happens when you recycle stuff. Like where does it go? When you throw stuff away, where does it go? People really care about it. Yeah, and um, this shit that people care about. So that's the, yeah, that's, the, that's what we're looking into. Yeah, it sounds, uh, it sounds exciting. It, does, it, does. it really does. Um, so we're, we're coming towards the end, mate. And, uh, you know, um, uh, reluctantly, um, you've got 12 points on, on the league table. Uh, sure I can win some more points. bit pissed though. off that you, you've done us on the gauntlet. Um, <laughs> uh, love what you're doing at Jungle. So I'm going to give you one extra point, but I, you know, and I'll give you an opportunity to win one more with right. the guest that you're going to obviously uh, recommend. Yeah. And not only recommend, Jamie, action for Series 2. Um, so you're on 13 points. Love what Jungle do. You know, we've... Been a, an admirer from afar um, for, a for a long time. time no, yeah, yeah. yeah. We probably did, probably started not too dissimilar times actually in terms of. I remember being in the office. You're know, talking about you uh, losing the page for a bit. I remember yeah. we, we was in our first. We just moved to the first office, hadn't we? I think we've been there about six months or something. I think I think you messaged. Oh, I was in contact so, with someone from your team. Yeah, um, Mitch. Yeah, it wasn't Mitch at the time. His name yeah. was Greg. Greg Wicker. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, it was. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, old Greg, legend. I'm, I'm still here. Is he still here? Yeah, he's still yeah. here. I'm actually on holiday at the moment. No, right. just can't Could you him, definitely yeah. start before us? Because I remember we we just started. Oh right. Okay. And um, I remember he told me off because I referred to um, VT as a Facebook page. <laughs> anyway, we're not Facebook page. But no, we have been, you know, big admirers for it for a, um, for a long time. I think it's great what you do. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of people in the space look up to what you're doing and, uh, and follow yeah. the trends. And it's, uh, yeah, glad to have you on. Um, and Craig, so, Craig, you guys as well, obviously, like, smashed it the last couple of years. So 
it's going all right. We're, we're not under. We're not gone under yet. Still got a bit of money in the bank. <laughs> so we can pay people. You know, this month, guys. Uh, if anyone's listening. Um, so the aim of this podcast is to get either Jennifer Lawrence or yeah. Tom Hanks on the podcast. So you know the whole six degrees separation thing. Well, it's actually funny because Jennifer's with. actually Moat's girlfriend, so I don't mind. <laughs> oh, <this. laughs> yeah. All right. Um, no, I'm joking. So, I wish. what we um, ask of every guest is to um, intro us to a guest they think would be great for the podcast, yeah. firstly, and it's can get us one step closer to either Jennifer Lawrence. Or because it's Tom Jennifer Hanks. Lawrence and because it's <coughs> Tom Hanks, you obviously, you don't want someone in, in the media space. It's whatever, just an interesting person. Interesting person from, you know. I guess from the anyone who's going to be interested is going to have a, a great story to tell from a business perspective or work, you know, right. life, life balance, etc. So, all right, uh, who um, springs to mind? Who springs to mind? Someone I'm chatting to a lot recently is uh, the founder of All Saints. You know, the clothing All Saints. Nice clothing line All Saints. Um, so he created it. I think it was in the '90s, and he actually sold it. I think um, when they got to about 15 stores. Um, obviously, now it's absolutely massive, but. Um, but yeah, built an incredible brand. He's a designer and he's a really, really interesting bloke and a great guy called Stuart. So I think he would definitely be able to share. He's already shared with me some of his stories and he's, you know, he's like a, he's from the rock and roll age. I was going to say, yeah, a lot more. Go on, love he's, it. He's, he's a legend. So I think he would, uh, yeah, he'd be great for it. Okay. So what we ask of people is, is that you, you know, make that connection and then we will, yeah. oh, Jamie opposite here will uh, we'll pick up. That'll be uh, a great one. Where's he based? Uh, in Say London. New York, New York. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah. You should have dropped that earlier. I should have could have introduced <laughs> yeah, you. Anyone, New York. Is, but anyone uh, across the sea? No, he's, um, he's in London. So okay, brilliant. He's around here. That sounds like an, uh, an amazing guest to get on. So um, we're going to end you on. It's, that is a really good guest recommendation, actually. So you will get another point. You'll end on 14, which I think puts you a second place. Maybe join with Justin Morehouse. Third. Third. Oh, third. Justin place. got 15, did he? 16, something like that. Oh. All right. Can I put an yeah. appeal in for the, uh, the scoring system? <laughs> yeah, you can put an appeal in, yeah. Because if I, if, I if I got my one wrong that I got right, even then I couldn't have beaten the guy. So how does that work? You know, I thought just, you looked at This is bullshit. Yeah. Oh, look, <laughs> because I noticed that it says you, you've won um, Great British Entrepreneur of the Year. Cheers, yeah. Young, young, young the, entrepreneur. Young entrepreneur. Not and Lee yeah. also. The proper one. I just won region, mate. Oh, really? He, won, like, he bombed the whole thing, didn't he? I mean, so, you had to bring it up, make me look like a prick. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, you, you're part of the same. Was that the West one, wasn't that? Yeah, yeah, yeah NatWest, Nat West, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, mate, I've gave out the points that I've given out. You didn't give out any. Like, you've sat there all <laughs> I didn't day. know that was Good. my job. Mate, you can give out I'm points. I'm just filling in. I can yeah, do what I, I want. I think I've been harmed by the lack of experience of your... Uh, <laughs> mate, <laughs> I'm always quite tired with the points. Dan's usually dishing them out, okay. so... I'll give, yeah. you, I'll give you another two points as an apology for not dishing them out throughout the whole Wow, so what does that do now? I'm allowed to do that. Fair. 16? Yeah. yeah. I'll take second. I'll take it's second. It's second. <laughs> I don't deserve first. You know, if I got five out of five... On my questions and yeah, I uh, well, be, if you got five out of five, you'd be joined top, wouldn't you? So, yeah. um, and to be honest, I would have given you another point if you weren't such a prick about the whole viral thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, it. it has been an absolute <laughs> pleasure having you on. Um, busy guy, have have a good break over the Easter time uh, and get yourself back out to uh, New York. I'm um, no doubt everyone will see the growth of Jungle um, throughout the next couple of years, and uh, we'll all be watching. Uh, Cheers, been an absolute pleasure Jamie Bolden last episode of series one how's your week been uh, I've been Lee Wilcox I've been Adam Barry we're done stick a fork in us 